Okay, so now that we know how to analyze the x-rays, we want to actually start doing some cervical spine interpretation. So I've gathered a few x-rays that are a good example of either loss of cervical lordosis or degenerative aspects at several different stages. And I think that'll be a really good example for us to go over. So this is the x-ray we used for our original x-ray analysis. And again, so dealing with the forward head posture, so where the center of gravity is shifted forward, the more forward that goes, the more weight is actually going to be transferred to the C5, C6 degenerative complex. And what you're going to see is, in all of these different stages, no matter what, C5, C6 are going to be your two most common areas that take that load or weight. So that's where we're going to start to see our degenerative changes first. Now also we'll be able to look at these different segments and determine about how long that degeneration has been going on based on two things. So the collapse at the anterior vertebral body of C5, osteophytic formation, of course loss of disc height, and then C6, and then does it go down into C7? Does C4 have the same thing? So let's start off with a patient who's just starting to experience that same thing. So again, so here, looking down through the cervical spine, again, looking at C5, we're seeing a little bit of that bowing in. This is a younger patient, a tiny bit of bowing in at C4, and again at C6. C2, or C3 and C2 are all doing pretty well. So this is just another example of that C5, C6 degenerative complex. And again, on this patient, same thing. So, C5, that weight sits right there as that cervical spine goes forward. And these distances are different, so you're not going to see such a drastic difference in every patient. This one being only 0.78 inches forward. Had obviously not the same amount of load is sitting on C5, so we see a lot less degeneration. Most of these patients are within the same age group, plus or minus two, so about four years uh, between or with all the ages combined. So that C5 is showing again that front collapse where we're seeing that bowing in or that concave surface. And then again on another patient, a little bit more significant on this one. And again, so now we can start to grade, okay, so with the same distance forward, if it's the same distance forward, same characteristics, same age, same demographics, what would cause this one to have more deviation or more concavity than the other x-ray? And the only other factor there, of course, would be time. So we can then extrapolate based off the patient's ages and case histories how long that this system has been in this position and the amount of degeneration that we see. So for instance, if we put these two patients together, And then let's zoom in, and again, this is about the same distance forward as far as the center of gravity goes, so we're looking about the same amount of load. So now the only factor is, and these patients are within two years age of each other, so now we have to factor in how much longer has this system been forward versus this system, and that's fairly easy. So. When we see just the beginning of that concavity and then a little bit again at C6, usually we can see that within three to five years depending on other factors. If there's obviously trauma associated with that, it might uh, complicate that. It could cause an acceleration. But typically without trauma and an average of let's say a 30 year old male and or female, when you see something that has about this concavity, we're going to be looking at about three to five years when you get over here where we see much more concavity at C5 and then C4, we also have a little bit of change in C6 again. And we even have a little bit of flattening of that anterior superior surface. So this we're looking probably more like 10 years or maybe even going up to 10 to 15 years depending on uh, other factors. But we're going to settle most likely probably about 10 years on this one. Now if we go back to our original example on this x-ray, this patient obviously much longer. And the more complicating factors we have, the longer this system has been under that amount of weight or load. So not only is the front of C5 collapsed, we also have the osteophytic bridge 
forming it down to C6. C6 is in the midst of collapse. Not so much happening at C4. Right now, the weight is such that it's going to hit all on these bottom three vertebrae. So you won't even see a lot of degeneration in the next decade on this patient on C4, 3, or 2. All of the degeneration is going to be happening at C5, 6, and 7. And again, take into account the decreased disc height. And our other two x-rays, they hadn't gotten there yet, so the more time this system spins in this position and the further forward it is, the more degeneration we're going to see. So this patient's obviously within, or rather not within, but this is 20, 30 years worth of degenerative changes and just absolute pummeling of those three bottom vertebrae. Now still, so here's the neat part because we can take that spine and with a simple corrective procedure, we can bring that spine back almost within normal limits as far as the bones themselves to the cervical lordotic curvature. Now obviously we're not going to make an immediate change at C5 and C6, but over the course of time by keeping this structure properly oriented, these bones and the disc will be able to stabilize and we can halt those degenerative changes and save this patient from surgery should there be a disc herniation or a structural failure in the cervical spine. Now again, once it's this far along, that's not guaranteed because not every patient will respond this well. The majority of patients will, but there are the complicating factors with the degenerative issues and the decreased disc height, all of that does compound treatment. So this is how we interpret the amount of degeneration at the C5, C6 vertebral segment and also looking at other factors such as C4, and other vertebrae involved. Now, if you have an auto accident patient or you have a patient that has a significant cervical trauma, that can accelerate those degenerative effects. And within five years post-trauma, it could look like 10 to 15 years worth of degenerative effects. But it's really just an acceleration by the actual trauma itself. And that's our segment on the C5, C6 degenerative complex and how to actually evaluate and interpret some of these results that you're finding to transfer those to patients. Or if you're a patient watching these videos, this is what you should be looking for in your own x-rays themselves.